Robert Gayros is someone who I believe needs no further introduction, <laughs> despite still being a grad student. Um, I've, I feel very lucky almost to have met Robert in one of the VSS projects two or three years ago, right? When you started working on your work with Felix and Matthias. And Robert is uh, presenting from Germany, uh, University of Tübingen. And uh, he's gonna be speaking about on the supervised similarities of super on the surprising similarities of supervised and self-supervised models. Robert, please take it away. Thanks, Arturo. And um, also big shout out to all of the organizers of, of this uh, workshop. It's a fantastic lineup. Um, I'm, I'm super excited. So yes, I'll be talking about the similarities of supervised and self-supervised models. And I'll start by explaining some of the motivation behind the excitement that surrounds uh, self-supervised learning right now. And I think part of that story is that uh, supervised learning has quite a few problems. So we know it's not particularly robust. Um, it suffers from shortcut learning. It's um, clearly showing uh, many aspects of non-human behavior. It has a texture bias and it's incredibly label and data hungry. So just standard plain um, feed forward supervised learning has quite a few uh, issues. And the big hope is of course that self-supervised learning might overcome some of these issues and make progress. So the situation uh, to draw scheme here is sort of um, standard supervised CNNs. They're not particularly human-like, they're not particularly robust. Humans on the other end, they're quite robust and they're arguably also uh, fairly human-like. Um, so the question really is how far is self-supervised learning going to get us into this uh, intriguing direction? And there are already quite a few um, super exciting studies that looked into some of these aspects. We decided to look at this uh, question from this uh, behavioral perspective. So we'll be comparing human and um, self-supervised and supervised uh, behavior. Um, so the methods that we used was um, essentially we took a bunch of uh, existing data sets um, carefully collected in the lab, lots of observers. Um, we compared that to quite a few supervised torch vision models and also to a range of self-supervised contrastive models. Um, within those contrastive models, we include SimClear for the purpose of plotting. We're using a different color here because SimClear sometimes uh, stands out, but this is also just a self-supervised contrastive model. And the paradigm that we used for collecting the human behavioral data was, was quite simple. We presented them with an image for a brief uh, presentation time. We then had a one over F noise mask to limit the influence of recurrent processing. And then humans had to choose one of those uh, 16 cate uh, categories over there. And the same images were shown to CNNs and we also asked them to rate, um, to pick one of these categories. So um, let's, uh, let's see um, some, some results here. Uh, the first, and in total, we, we looked at three different questions. And the first one was, uh, noise robustness. So just a question, when we change certain aspects of an image, how fast does recognition accuracy degrade with noise, uh, both for humans and for different um, uh, types of CNNs? And just to give one example here, that's uh, just standard blurring. When we increase the level of blur, then at some point, obviously, the classification accuracy drops. And it drops much faster, much faster for supervised models than it drops for human observers. So the big question now is obviously, well, where are self-supervised models uh, in, in this range? Are we making any progress here? And actually for this particular type of noise um, blurring, we don't really see any um, striking differences here. Um, but obviously we're interested in more than just a single type of noise. So we looked at um, many of these and, and not as a slide with lots of results. Um, I'm not gonna go into many details here, but essentially the pattern that we can see is that self-supervised models and standard supervised models, they, on most of those cases, they agree fairly well, except for those three that I'm highlighting here. And, and this is where the blue model, SimClear, really seems to stand out. And this is interesting because um, these are some types of noise, like uniform noise, contrast, high pass, that weren't part of the training data augmentations used for, for SimClear training. So this is some sort of an um, emergent finding here. Um, so for noise robustness, it's kind of a, a mixed story. Some are, are quite quite interesting. Others, it's uh, for other cases like low pass filtering, it's 
rather more disappointing, um, I would say, if you're looking to increase uh, robustness. Um, the second aspect that we looked at was uh, trying to go at a deeper level and go beyond aggregated scores like accuracy. And that was error patterns. So essentially, two observers, they can have 50% accuracy each, but we're really interested in, well, are they finding the same images hard and, and um, the same images difficult? And this is what we um, can look at here. The intuition, again, is if two observers or a human observer in a CNN, if they use the same strategy, they should also make, uh, make errors on the same individual images. And this is what we can quantify using the error consistency metric. Essentially, we're going to see some overlap in terms of making errors just by chance. So this would be a corrected for chance would be zero. If a value is zero, that means um, just random overlap. And then if there's some systematic agreement here in terms of which images are easy and difficult, then we would see higher values here. Um, and now we compare different groups, for example, human observers, one human observer against other human observers. And what we can see here is that there's actually quite uh, quite a consistent agreement um, in terms of finding the same images easy or difficult. So one human observer agrees with other human observers. Also, a supervised model agrees with most of the other supervised models and uh, self-supervised models agree with other self-supervised models. Now, the interesting question again is, well, what about across groups? How about humans versus other models, for example? So humans versus self, uh, standard supervised models actually don't, don't really show much of an agreement here. Also humans versus self-supervised models, not much of an agreement. But, and this is, is super interesting um, and, and something that we haven't quite fully understood where this comes from. Supervised models and self-supervised models, despite being trained in a completely different way, they show an extremely high agreement. Um, they they uh, completely agree which images are easy and difficult. And this might indicate that they might be using similar strategies, uh, despite being uh, trained in a completely different way. So this is um, something I'm, I'm quite curious about and haven't uh, fully understood yet. And last but not least, um, we decided to look at shape versus texture bias. This is the, the last of the three experiments that we looked at. Are self-supervised models, now that they're not chained with labels, um, are they going to be biased towards texture or shape? And the idea is that in standard images, you could use either feature to, to, um, and, and get high accuracies. Cats have cat shape, cat texture. So we can just go the other way around for the purpose of the experiment and create images that have conflicting shape and texture information. So with this paradigm, we now investigated humans uh, supervised models and self-supervised models. And if the response was cat in this example here, this would be counted towards shape bias. If it was texture, it would be counted towards texture bias. And we know already that humans have a strong shape bias, um, no surprise here. And we also know already that all those uh, 24 supervised models that they're on the texture bias side. And now again, big question is where, where are these exciting new self-supervised contrastive models? And actually, they all seem to be on the texture bias side as well. Um, this includes uh, self-supervised Simclear. It's a bit more in the direction of, of a shape bias, but not completely there. Um, so this is also uh, an instance where we see a surprising similarity between supervised and self-supervised learning. Um, and yeah, just to, to um, wrap this up, what we've seen is that um, self-supervised and supervised models, they agree in the sense that they have a similar lack of robustness with the exception of Simclear, which shows some emerging uh, benefits here of, uh, um, of self-supervised learning or perhaps of the particular data augmentations used during training. We don't exactly know yet. We see that um, these groups make highly consistent errors, uh, much more than what can be expected by, by uh, pure uh, chance agreement alone. And finally, that they're all um, biased towards texture. So right now, we don't really see good models of human behavior, at least for these particular types of data sets that we used here.
But um, we also think that this is just the very start of this um, exciting self-supervised revolution that machine learning is, is currently undergoing. So um, the, the hope was that um, self-supervised learning is going to get us closer to human perception and also closer to robust models. And well, empirically, our first uh, results seem to indicate that it's actually more 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 similar to standard supervised models uh, than we would have expected. Um, again, this is just for a particular type of uh, self-supervised models, which is contrastive models, and there's um, much more to come. So this is just a snapshot in time, um, not a, a definite conclusion. And we already see some exciting uh, trends for simply here, which is uh, more robust, not particularly more, more human-like, even for those cases where Simclear showed superior noise robustness, it was even way beyond um, human robustness. So there wasn't, wasn't um, much progress in the direction of human-like, um, but it's, it's certainly an improvement in terms of noise robustness. And, and I guess there are many uh, other interesting aspects that, that um, one could look at. And currently, I would say we, we have um, many more questions than we have answers. <laughs> um, there, there are still many things that we don't really understand about this. So um, why is it the case that supervised models and self-supervised models end up in such a similar space? At least that's what our data seems to suggest. There's no principled reason why this should be the case, um, or at least none that's, that's apparent to me at the moment. So there's definitely a lot that um, remains to be understood about this. But um, also, we're just at the very start of this exciting self-supervised revolution. And I believe there's much more to come and investigate. And with that, I'd like to give a big shout out to um, my, my colleagues, collaborators, and, and mentors here. That's Kandaracu, Benjamin, Matthias, Felix, and Wieland. And uh, well, thanks 